Well, hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. Um, today I thought we would go to the book of Psalms, Mark, and, and this is a passage I feel sure most of you are familiar with, but it bears repeating. It is the Psalm of David in Psalm 62, and I'm going to jump in about verse 5 where David says, Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. And I know we've talked about this before on Noah's window, but I think it bears repeating. And I, I think it's, it's uh, noteworthy that David says, wait quietly for the Lord to answer. And, I, you know, we've talked about this so many times, but waiting is hard. It is hard. Well, waiting also communicates value. I mean, if something's not very important, there's no sense in, in waiting. I mean, we, you know, we, we all are encouraged every once in a while to wait. You know, it's like if you, if you go to a business and they'll say, hey, if you'll wait here for a few minutes, we'll give you a 5% off coupon. Well, 5% off is not worth waiting for, you know, most right. of the time. And so we'll just say it's not very important. But, you know, if you're waiting on a, a doctor to do a needed medical procedure, then clearly we'll, we'll wait all day and mm -hmm. so waiting communicates value and I think it's 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 a it's a scripture that reminds us God is so valuable what God is doing is so valuable that it's it's wise to wait on him I think also on. trust because absolutely if you're gonna wait for someone you you are trusting that when they do a respond or answer or fulfill whatever it is that they have the power and the capability to do whatever it is that's needed. So. Well, there's also a certain measure of dependence there. Yes. You know that. So when we wait on the Lord, it, it's it, it communicates that we value Him, we value what He's doing, that we depend on Him, that He is worth waiting for. I mean, I think maybe, maybe that's the, maybe that's the clearest way of saying what I'm trying to say. When you when you wait on someone, you say that person is worth waiting for. Right. And. Clearly, what God is doing in our lives and in the lives of others is worth waiting for. And, and I don't think that necessarily God just tells us to wait on Him to prove that you know we can wait or that we're patient. Oftentimes, God's timing is, right. is, is, comes into play. I mean, we want God to work and move very quickly, but there are times when God is doing multiple things in the situation, and we have to wait for the right time to come about for us mm -hmm. to, to, to have the fulfillment of what we need from God. It, re it reminds me, this is probably a bad illustration, but sometimes maybe we're, when we're in a situation on the road and we want the person in front of us to hurry up and go, but when, only when we get past that particular place we realize there was a good reason that mm -hmm. we shouldn't go right then. Um, well, I was talking about a similar situation in the, in the messages last weekend about flying back from Dallas to Fort Worth and the flight should have taken an hour and 15 minutes turned out to take three hours and then finally the pilot explained that there was a storm that kept building and getting bigger and bigger and, and once he explained that I realized why we were having to wait you know I wasn't happy about it to be honest about two hours into that flight when it was you know midnight and I should have been home. I think the other thing to think about in this particular uh, thought and that David's sharing with us is the alternative to waiting on the Lord is to take things into our own hands. Mm -hmm. And there are many stories in the scripture besides stories we could all tell of, of what happens when we choose to get impatient yeah. and take things into our own well, hands. It's like you said, at that at that moment we can, if, if we choose not to wait patiently on God, we really can do two other things that are bad. We can give up and, and give up on God and say, well, you know, I guess there's no sense in, in trusting God for this. The other thing that we can do is to do what Saul did in the Old Testament, and that's to take matters into our own hands and get ahead of God, and mm -hmm. that always ends badly. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess as we're talking, actually we're recording this in the evening, we're, we've been talking even today about some really difficult situations that are, are going long. Yeah. And they're, and they're painful situations. And in those situations, it's hard. It's it hard, hard sometimes to wait for the answer. But I'm not um, sure there's anything harder. I agree. I than, agree. Than when, when things don't seem to be changing and things don't seem to be getting better and time is elapsing and the difficulty that's associated with that time keeps building and building, you know, how do we keep our confidence in God? It's really what I'm going to be talking about this coming weekend in the series called through. Mm, yes, well, we're looking forward to that. 
and I don't know what you on our Noah's window, what in our family, what you might be facing, but I know we all have challenges that we're dealing with, and I just appreciate David's encouragement for us to wait quietly and patiently on the Lord to move because He does hear us. He promises that He hears us, and He promises to answer even if the answer seems long and coming. So I hope that will encourage you. And whatever it is that's going on in your life today, I know it's encouraged me in some of the situations that we've been praying about yes. day yeah. after day, and, and we're still looking for God's answer, and we don't know yet what that answer is. But He's trustworthy, and He is working, and at just the right time, He's going to answer in, uh, in a way that we'll all be thankful for, I'm sure. Well, I think when we do wait patiently on the Lord, it glorifies God. Yes, yes. Well, on that note, Mark, would you lead us in a word of prayer this morning? Our Father God, we come before you today. Our Lord, the scripture that we've looked at today, we confess is difficult for all of us because we want to see situations resolved. But Lord, it is good to know that you don't quit on us. And so Lord, we don't want to quit on you. We don't want to give up too soon. And we don't want to take matters into our own hands and start trying to play God. We know that you are God, and it's best for you to be God and for us to wait quietly and patiently. Help us, O oh Lord. Strengthen us and enable us to wait on you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And this will be uh, airing on Tuesday morning. And so, uh, weather permitting, we're looking forward to the That's concert right. tonight. Looking forward to the concert. And, and if for some reason the weather doesn't work out, then yeah. it'll move to Thursday. To but Thursday. We'll, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep you abreast of all yes. those things. And you can always check out our, our uh, website at newspring.org. Yes, so we'll look forward to seeing you there, Lord willing, if you're there. That's right. Well, we're going to pray for good weather. Yes. So hope you'll join us again here on Noah's Window tomorrow as well. We'll look forward to seeing you. We'll see you soon. God bless.